Welcome back, you guys, to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. And today's title is Turning Tragedy into Triumph. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Join us because we're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's your time to celebrate you, unleash your empowered self, and step back into your confidence. You can visit our store, bootybands.com, for the best female fitness products out there and subscribe so you get notifications when every episode drops. Let's get right into it. Let's meet Melissa. Holy cow. Melissa Impet. She is a spiritual life coach who works with people who are seeking an alternative to traditional therapy. Now we're going to get real. We're going to get real, real. So hopefully you guys can grab your journal and listen in because she is going to give some awesome nuggets for today. We got three steps on how to really turn this tragedy that you're going through into triumph. Let's go. Melissa, your story is so intriguing to me as far as the title, Turning Tragedy into Triumph. And the reason why I like this is because I think all of us have experienced some level of tragedy in our life. So I think this is a very relatable topic today. So you have told me a little bit about where your your journey started and how you kind of were like hating your body and like this Mm -hmm. old version of Melissa. So can you guide us through where you began? Oh my goodness, Danita. I remember so vividly sitting in my old house that I grew up in young girl, so lost, so confused, grabbing the fat on my thighs, wanting to just take a kitchen knife and like cut the fat off my thighs because I was so tired of feeling them chafing. Like I'm getting emotional thinking about it now. Like I was so tired of feeling that chafing between my thighs. All of the girls around me were so thin. It was the time of like the Victoria's Secret model era. And I just didn't look like that. And it was so painful and really caused me to have this unhealthy relationship with my body. Definitely already getting emotional. Holy cow, it's not even a minute into the podcast. You know, I'm like already tearing up. So I can absolutely relate with that. So um, the fact that you said, yeah, getting the knife and cutting, I honestly had that same memory. So you're bringing me back to myself too. So Mm -hmm. take me through it. You even had more of this like traumatic experience. Bring us down. Like what was this like self-sabotage cycle you were living in? Yeah. So, you know, one of the one of the things that I always love to share about trauma is, you know, there's not really a scale of worse trauma or better trauma, right? Anything that's happened in our life that caused that impact is valid. So, you know, when I was younger, I went through a traumatic situation where my best friend in the entire world, he was my stepfather. He was an older gentleman and he was just like my role model, my inspiration, my everything. He choked to death at my friend's birthday party. And it happened in front of me and my mom wasn't there. I was really the only one there. And it was horrifying. It was a nightmare literally playing out in front of my eyes. And from that moment, the trauma impacted me so deeply. And as a 10 year old little girl, I didn't know how to process those emotions, you know? So I turned to seeking attention. I turned to using my body as a way to try to find love or attention or validation from men. So it really turned into this scary situation of me not respecting myself in any way because I just was looking for that love that Pete had provided for me, you know? So I was using my body as a tool to feel as if I could be validated or approved. And it brought me down some pretty scary paths. So from there, you know, I just, I was doing a lot of things that I thought were helping me heal, you know, trying to find people to pay attention to me or guys that would drive me around because I didn't even have my license yet, you know. And what happened is I started hanging out with a lot older crew and the older crew started introducing me to alcohol and drugs and then i was using these as ways to numb myself essentially you know so i was instead of working through the trauma and the pain i was learning these coping mechanisms that i could just smoke weed and get high and giggle all afternoon instead of really looking at some of the you know some of the things that my mom had me in therapy for you know but hanging out with the older kids it was much more fun and exciting to do things that felt bad. And, you know, I felt like I was the bad girl and everyone liked me because I was the bad little girl, you know, and it just brought me down this path of really not 
taking care of my body in the way that I do now. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I know you now and that's a whole like, can you imagine? Yeah. Flip. <laughs> that's so different than the person I know you as. So this is, this is obviously so fast. And you know, that's why I love using this quote, you know, it's amazing to take our tragedy and really turn it into triumph. Mm-hmm. You know, I really, I could have continued going down a really scary path. You know, a lot of my friends from childhood ended up going to juvie and they ended up going to jail and, and a lot of scary situations. And it's, quite a miracle that, you know, I chose to take some of this trauma and tragedy and use it as a way to fuel myself and my future. And I'm grateful, you know, it took hitting kind of like a rock bottom. I got sent to, uh, I went to four different high schools, two of them being um, boarding schools. And that's when I kind of hit my rock bottom because I got kicked out. I got immediate dismissal in the first four months of a new school. And it sent me to a Boston public school and I literally got scared straight. I had gotten to this new low and that's really what helped me realize I got myself here. The decisions that I were making every single day is what got me to this point. And if I got myself this low, I could bring myself back up. I knew I had it in me. And that's really where I started transitioning into more leadership and more understanding how I could use my energy as a way to serve others instead of using my energy as a way to kind of knock myself down over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, there, there is this, there was always a pivotal point. So you have to mm-hmm. hit a pivotal point in your life where you make the decision yeah. to change. And in that yeah. moment, it was because like bring us to that point, you were just so scared of being where you were at that you were like, I'm, I definitely have hit my low and I'm ready mm-hmm. to make a, a change where I'm, I'm hitting something different, right? Yeah. And I love how you highlighted that because it's a pivotal moment that we have to experience for ourselves. You know, I had different therapists, I had different people in my life, but it's not up to anyone else. It's really a point that we have to hit, unfortunately. As many people as we have that are loving us and supporting us and wanting the best for us, it's like we almost got to get to that point of being sick and tired of being sick and tired before we actually make a change. And that's a great topic because um, our low is not somebody else's low. Yes. And so um, our parents might be looking at us and going, oh my gosh, I have, I've already hit my low. As a parent, they're like, my low is hit. Like, oh, please get out of this. It's not anybody's decision except for our own. And it can be painful, but we're all on our own unique journey. And that's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. What I also noticed, just a side topic on this, I have noticed when you're codependent to these people that are actually needing to hit their low, but you're actually making it so their low never really becomes their low. Oh, that's juicy. Yep. Yeah. So I have noticed that there is a balance between being dependent or codependent where we're, we're actually doing too much for those people that, that actually we need to pull ourselves back, allow them to hit that space where then they make that decision on their own. Yeah, I always think about the shoes that my mom was in, you know, watching me go through all of this. It must have been so challenging for her watching all of this, knowing that she couldn't control. No one could. I couldn't even control myself at that point. So she had no control. So I know it must have been really challenging, but I'm I'm grateful that she did kind of back back away a bit because I did. I had to I had to hit that place on my own. And as hard as it was for her, it was pivotal in my journey. Well, and then it becomes your why. Then it becomes your strength. Now, because of how low you've been, you know that darkness. That's why you go just as high to reach the opposite. And so that is important to know those that are listening. If you have maybe a loved one or even yourself, sometimes we do have to hit those rock bottom moments. And I know that sucks. Mm -hmm. And that's life. But I will tell you that if you're in that moment right now, it's going to be your most amazing story, just like as Melissa is telling us now. So as you're going through those hard times, remember that there is always an opposite. There are called laws of the universe that there's not, there's not such thing as you're always going to stay on bottom. You will be on top. And eventually this will become your most powerful story. If you take that trauma and you turn that tragedy into triumph, you know, when you flip that and you know that you can use that as your fuel moving forward. And that's really what I would love to share today three tips to heal from some of the tragedy and the trauma and turn that into your greatest motivation moving forward 
So let's go into that. You actually just read my mind. So let's go into step number one. What is the first step to really heal the trauma and allow yourself to go into your highest self? The first step is it's a challenging one, but it's one that sets us free. And it's this idea of forgiveness. So forgiveness work is something that when I first heard about it, I'm like, what are you talking about? How am I going to forgive some of these people that have caused me the most pain in my life? It just didn't make sense to me that I was going to forgive some of these people, you know, especially thinking about some of the men in my life that had sexually assaulted me and taken advantage of me. The thought of forgiving them just completely blew my mind. I'm grateful that I had a mentor at the time who really helped walk me through this because forgiveness can be challenging, especially if you have a lot of deep pain. But forgiveness is a tool to set ourselves free. It's not to let the other person off the hook in any way. It's not saying that what the other person did wasn't wrong. It's more so to find this freedom within ourselves. So the way that I love thinking about it is like a charcoal grill. If you think of a charcoal grill and you have those charcoals in there, they're really hot. They're like red, red hot. If we're not forgiving people, if we're choosing not to forgive people, it's like we're standing there holding on to one of those coals. In reality, we are the only ones getting burned. Mm. The other person isn't. The other person might not even be impacted at all about the resentment that you hold on to. It's truly just burning yourself. Yeah. So this forgiveness component component was something that helped me be able to release some of the anger, the frustration, the sadness, the pain, the resentment that I had been holding on to. And it was literally in my energetic field, keeping me in a lower vibrational state. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Absolutely. So this first step, you know, I, I suggest doing letters. I love forgiveness letters and kind of going through the layers of different emotions. So you want to start at the deepest layer, hate, anger, resentment, get it all out. I like to say with clients, empty the tank, you know, write it out. Why are you angry? Why do you hate this person? Why are you mad? Why do you hold all of this in you? Let it all out so that way you can get yourself to a place of forgiving the situation and setting yourself free. Absolutely love this one. Um, there's two, two things that come up for me so far on this. Um, one is we know that hurt people hurt people, mm -hmm. right? So I like that you said writing a letter because sometimes when we actually go to these people, maybe it's not possible. Maybe they're not still, maybe they're not even around anymore, yeah. but I think it's really about clearing the energy within yourself because you said it is Absolutely. a low vibration and we attract that vibration as you know, and you talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think the most importantly is being able to even, as you're writing it out, understanding why maybe they did these things. And when you ask yourself that you'll start to find out that they were also hurt and that's why they hurt right yeah. that and, and it becomes a, a train and so what's beautiful about forgiveness is it stops the train because mm -hmm. when you're hurt think of all the people that you have actually hurt imagine mm -hmm. your mom being hurt of all the actions you've done right and so imagine all the people we've hurt along the way when we were going through our own pain yeah. and so then it kind of creates this like this mirror effect of realizing how we really can forgive based off of knowing that this person was in a really low time because not happy people go and hurt people. It's not yeah. a thing, right? Yeah. But something I really want to ask you, the second thing I wanted to bring up was you written on here about forgiving yourself though. Yes. I was just going to mention that next. Yeah. You know, after we do this work with forgiving others, then it's time to look at ourselves. You know, what is it that you have to forgive yourself for? And this was so pivotal in my journey because I was mad at myself. I was disappointed in myself. I was frustrated with myself. You know, I didn't even want to look at myself in the mirror most of the time because I was just disgusted. And how am I going to get to this beautiful place, living this high vibrational life where I'm attracting things and miracles are showing up all the time if I have hatred towards myself? It just doesn't add up. You know, so that self forgiveness component was so important. I needed to be able to look, and this is where I suggest mirror work, looking at yourself and saying, Melissa, I forgive you. I love you. You're figuring this out. You've got this. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You're always growing, you're always learning. And this is something that I do to this day, every single day, especially when I'm working out. 
Mm. I love doing forgiveness work while I'm working out. That's great. And let's, let's even um, hone it in a little bit, even more detailed as far as the topic today of, we know mm -hmm. that a lot of us are trying to either lose weight or try to get into our best body. And so, you know, I think this is such a great one because I always ask, I always ask members, do you think it was the donut that made you fat? Or do you mm -hmm. think it was the guilt and shame Interesting after question. the donut? Yes. And, and, and it's, it's, we can either take that donut and make it into that guilt and shame yeah. that lasts a week or a month or even years, mm -hmm. or that forgiveness of ourselves eating the donut. We had something AKA bad. We bad. labeled it yeah. bad labeled. and go, you know what? I forgive myself and my next meal is going to be better. So forgiveness overall, whether it's a, tra a traumatic event, whether it's the route we took ourselves on, or if it's just having a skipped workout or a bad meal. Absolutely changes your energy. It really, really does. And this brings me perfectly into the second step, which is this idea of meeting your higher self. I am a spiritual woo-woo person, I will tell you that. So this idea of meeting your higher self, you know, is this idea of meeting your internal guide your inner guide, the little angel. I always talk about a little angel on one shoulder, a little devil on the other. The little angel sitting on one shoulder is your higher self. That little devil sitting on the other shoulder, that's more so your ego, okay? And your higher self always has your best interests at heart and never holds anything against you. So this idea of forgiveness, I like to say it's sunny, saying, Melissa, it's okay. It's all right. Release that. Release the inner critic, you know, and come back to your truth. So my higher name, my higher self, her name is Sunny. I think that naming your higher self, if you've never done that before, it's a beautiful exercise. It just creates this connection. Like Sunny is my best friend. I wake up every single morning. I'm like, good morning, Sunny. How am I supposed to show up today? What will you have me do? What will you have me say? You know, 